Hello dear students, welcome back to my class. This is my third lecture. So okay, so uh, we have been discussing about the relation between the uh, physics as well as the technology. Okay, now today we are going to discuss what is the contribution of physics. As in the, my first lecture, I already told you, right? So physics is the basic of each and every discipline. Uh, like from physics, uh, we have uh, means from physics, right? From physics, we got the different branches of science, right? Say chemistry, chemistry, and we can say math or mathematics, and we can say life sciences, which is called biology, biology. Okay, so physics is the basic or basis. For each and every discipline, I mean, there are so many different disciplines also, okay, which is based on physics. But I'm giving you because this uh, we are very familiar with this physics. Uh, we are very familiar with the biology, chemistry, and maths, right? Okay, so what is the contribution of physics in biology? Okay, so let me give you a small I means a small example. Okay, so the physics or the medical science, right? It's right become more advanced because of the advan advancement of the physics right because physics have designed so many different machines so many different uh, different uh, you know so many different uh, what to say instrument that we can use in the hospitals that we can use in the med field of medical science right uh, so if i say the electron microscope right if i say the electron microscope or if i say the microscope okay it is the microscope which is designed by using the principle of physics right Designed by what? Principle of physics. And by using this microscope, we can visualize the cells of a body. We can visualize the cells of what? Cells of a stem and so many different things, right? This is one example, which is a very, you know, very uh, important contribution of physics into what? Biology, okay? When you go through your textbook, you'll get numerous, I mean, lots of contribution of physics, okay? Uh, you, you cannot count because physics is such a vast and such a very interesting and very powerful branch okay of science very powerful branch of science and next when i say uh, chemistry right how it developed chemistry how uh, chemistry developed from physics okay so first it is the physics that started the study that x-ray diffraction right Dif x-ray dis diffraction or discovery of the x-rays right uh, a study of the structure of an atom or what's inside the atom what's inside the nucleus right when we got the electrons protons neutrons okay which uh, uh, which brought a very great, uh, you know, interesting revolution in the field of chemistry. And after that, we we started learning the chemical bondings, right? We can started learning the configuration, the electrons. So all these things, every uh, concept of the chemistry, right? It started with the physics. Okay. So first, so uh, what is the contribution of maths? So starting the uh, when uh, uh, there was only physics, we started explore nature. Right. What is the principle? What is the logic behind any natural phenomena? But now we encounter or we face some problems that solving the particular phenomena. Okay. So for that reason, the physics from physics, we have developed mathematics, right? And uh, we develop a means that is called mathematics by which we can solve some, you know, problems related to our statement or the laws of physics. And physics has uh, so many contributions. As I already told you, physics has contribution in the society, right? The, so many gadgets you are using mobile phone or you are using a fan bulb everything is the product of physics everything is given by physics right so it's very interesting okay so this is the contribution dear students and you can go much detail in your from your book okay so so next okay let me tell you uh, imagination imagination okay so imagination this is a common word right everybody imagines right everybody imagines everybody dream about something right so the, how this imagination is related to physics how this imagination is related to what physics okay so in the earlier time and now also okay the imagination plays a very great role in physics okay so the, in the earlier time okay people like uh, want to fly right want to fly like birds in the open sky which leads to what flying of birds what flying of birds leads to design of aircraft right or you can say aircraft okay you can say aeroplane or any helicopter any kind of thing 
right? So flying of bird. Okay, this is an imagination. So earlier when uh, when aircraft and any flying uh, machines were not there, right? So people used to think uh, like we what if like we can fly like bars in the open sky? So which leads to what design of the aircraft? Okay, and let me give you uh, another example. Uh, like so, some people okay, they might think okay they they used to think right there may be uh, living things in other planet right there may be what living things like us or like the animals and something living things or there you know, something in the other planet right there might be living things in the other planet which leads to design the you know uh, something like aerospace that we use to go from our planet earth to the other planet okay so this is the imagination there might be something in the an another planet let's ex explore this planet let's see what's in that particular planet so this leads to what design of the aerospace and all these kinds of things and uh, and very common example okay so what if like we can uh, communicate before uh, inventing mobile phones before inventing any communication device okay people they might maybe they started thinking like what if we can uh, communicate with the people that which are far off right which are very far distance from us right so this leads to the uh, you know the invention of the telephones right so there are so many right this is the imagination which always helps in the physics okay so if you have great imagination right you can uh, you know you can uh, lead this imagination will lead you to some discoveries okay this is how the imagination plays a very important role in the field of physics okay So now we, uh, we have learned lots of things in, uh, about the physics, right? Uh, whether this is the scope of physics, whether this is the relation of physics in, with technology, whether this is the uh, you know, contribution of physics in the society, in the other discipline of sciences, right? And now, so I'll tell you what is the range of physics? What is the ability of physics? Okay, range of physics. So range of physics. Just, I'm just, naming the topic so that you can understand the say range of physics okay so physics if i explain the range of physics in terms of length in terms of what length if i tell you in terms of length okay so physics by using the principle of physics okay we can measure the very very small length that is around 10 to the power minus 14 meter okay now you just imagine 10 to the power minus 14 meter how small it's going to be it's like 1 by 10 to the 14 means 0.0000. It's like very, very small. Still, we, we cannot visualize. We cannot see it by our naked eyes. It cannot be seen by our naked eyes. Still, like, we can measure by using the law of physics. So, now you just think once. Okay, when you do it, ex, uh, like, you, by your own, you know, when you, uh, uh, what to say, when you experience this, when you can measure the radius of nucleus. Suppose you, you can measure the radius of uh, sodium, which we never, you know, we, we cannot see the uh, atom of a nucleus, uh, atom of a sodium by our naked eyes, but you just think once, if we can measure the nucleus of an atom of sodium. So it's going to be very interesting, right? So we, by, with the help of physics, we can measure very small length, right? 10 to, the, 10 to the power minus 14 and beyond. Okay, we can measure smaller than 10 to the power minus 14. Okay, and we can measure very large distance. Okay, the entire universe that is up to 10 to the power 26 meter okay now you just imagine right we can measure the radius or diameter of the whole universe which is 10 to the power 26 meter it's like billions it's a more than billions it's more than trillions right so this is the range of physics in terms of the you know in terms of what length okay if i tell you what is the range of physics in terms of mass okay in physics we can measure the mass of the electron right which we just uh, we have been studying all these things in our lower class as well as we'll get to know in the upper class right but the, you just imagine we can't see the electrons with our naked eyes but still just you imagine we can measure the weight of the electron so it is the range it is the or, its order of magnitude is 10 to the power 30 okay i think you guys already know what is the mass of electron mass of electron is 9.8 uh, 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg okay but when I apply the order of magnitude, so when I say order of magnitude, you'll get to know in your chapter two, okay? So it's going to be, because 9.1 is very close to 10, so I can take this 10, when I take this 10, it becomes 10 to the power minus 30, 
So for that region here, I am writing 10 to the power minus 30. So this is the mass of electron and we can measure the entire mass of the universe. We can measure what entire mass of the universe, that is 10 to the power 55 kg. Now you can imagine that right, 10 to the power minus 50, or 10 to the power 55 is going to be how much large it is, right? So this is how, this is the power of physics. Okay, this is the range of physics. We can measure very, very small weight or very, very small element as well as we can measure the weight of entire universe, okay? So there are so many, like we can define in terms of length, in terms of mass and in terms of, you know, the speed. So this is the range. I'm telling you just two examples, okay? So, so now, so this is the range, you know the scope, range, everything, right? So overall the edifice of physics, okay? It's very beautiful as well as it's very imposing, right? So when you, okay, when you uh, pursue the physics, especially the physics, okay, you'll uh, think, uh, you'll get, uh, get to know so many things and you'll appreciate the subject physics, okay? It's because it's very interesting. So now, when we discuss about the physics and one parameter is very common, right? The force, okay? Because everybody know the scientist, Sir Isaac Newton, so force. Okay, so force is a very important essence in our daily life, right? If we don't have force, so it's nothing, right? So force is very important in our daily life. So what is force? First, let me tell you what is force, okay? As you already know, what is force? It is a push or pull. Force is any kind of agent, right? What kind of agent? It is a push or pull. So force is an agent, which is what? Push or it may be pull, which change the position of the object or which may, which tend to change. I'm, I'm using the word which change or tend to means I, uh, you can in uh, you can say try to okay tend to change the position of the object. So what is force? Force is an agent which is push or pull which change or tend to change the position of the object. Okay. So when I apply some force, okay, when I apply some force, the position of the object is changes. Now you can see here if I apply this. I'm applying force that the position of this marker is changing, right? But it's not necessary every time when we apply force, the position must have to change, means position of the object must have to change. So here also on the board, on the whiteboard, I'm, I'm using, right? I'm pushing the whiteboard, but it's not changing the position, right? Because, right, it's potential energy is greater than my energy, right? So this is how, so what is force? Force is a push or pull which change or may change or may change the position of the object. Okay, now, so we can divide the whole force, okay, into two categories. One is fundamental, another one is derived. One is fundamental. Fundamental, in the sense you can use the word basic, fundamental. Fundamental force, okay, you can write fundamental force, another one is what? Derived. Derived, okay. So one is what? Derived force. Okay, first let us discuss what is fundamental force because once we have started the, our discussion with the fundamental force, then derived force will be easier for us to understand it. Okay, so in nature, there are only four fundamental forces. Okay, because as I, in the beginning of my class, as I already told you, physics believes in unification. Physics tries to compress the thing. Okay, and th that is how they have, you know, to understand the whole universe, understand the whole earth, they have only keep the four fundamental forces by which we can understand any kind of forces. Okay, so fundamental force, the types of fundamental forces, four types are number one, gravitational force. Gravitational force, okay? So what is gravitational force? Okay, so gravitational force as you can, uh, I think you already know this, right? Gravitational force is by virtue of mass, right? Any object, means the law of gravitation is given by Sir Isaac Newton. So what is the law of gravitation? Any object in this universe, okay, any object in this universe attract with each other, interacting with each other means any object or any body having mass has interact with each other because now you are standing somewhere and uh, around you some objects is there, right? And there is a force of attraction between, your, uh, between you and th that object is your surrounding, but we don't feel it. Why? What is the reason behind that? Because there is not that much, uh, not that mass difference between us. Means it's comparable mass, but we always feel the gravitation of Earth. Because if we uh, compare the mass of, you know, mass of our body with the mass of the Earth, 
it's very large right it's very large that's why we always experience the gravitational force so the law of gravitation states that right the force of attraction between the two bodies is directly proportional to product of their mass and it is inversely proportional to the dist square of distance between them okay so let me uh, explain with the help of diagram say i'm assuming two bodies say body a and body b having masses m1 and m2 and they have separated or they kept at a distance r apart from each other okay so echo law of gravitation suggests that the force of attraction between the two bodies is directly proportional to product of their masses product of their masses and it is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them when i say directly proportional it means that if the mass increases the force of attraction will increase and if i say inversely proportional means if i increase the distance between these two bodies their force of attraction will decrease and if i decrease the distance between the bodies right decrease the distance between the bodies their force of attraction will increases right they are inversely proportional so i can combine these two equations f proportional to m1 m2 divided by r square okay f uh, m1 m2 divided by r square so if i remove this proportionality right i'm putting equal so i have to put one constant that constant says z okay that since i have removed the proportionality sign i i must have to put one constant i think you guys already know why i have to put constant you have already studied i think in your class 7 proportionality so this constant has a specific name which we call the gravitational constant or in some other uh, in some book they call this constant as a universal gravitational constant is it clear okay so this is the equation of the law of gravitation okay by which we can understand the attraction okay so what is the use of this gravitational force okay by this gravitational force we can understand that what's happening in the galaxy how they behave what's happening in the stars what's happening uh, between earth and sun right it is because of the gravitational force so as i have already mentioned what's happening in the earth and what's happening in the sun what's happening in the galaxies means like gravitational force is a long range force means range of gravitation is what very large okay it is a long range force and next point gravitation is attractive in nature gravitation is what attractive in nature so it is exhibited by the bodies which have mass okay but among these four forces among these four forces okay means i i already told you right there are four forces in nature fundamental gravitational force is the weakest force gravitational force is what this is the weakest force okay so dear students so in our next class we'll discuss the three different types of the forces okay so before finishing my class let me tell you okay so actually the science okay dear students science is about okay science is about the punctuality if you have become a student of science okay if if you don't maintain a certain discipline if you're not punctual in your duty or in your study so uh, you cannot score good marks in science okay so it's all it's all about punctuality okay so i'll suggest today so if you because so many students when they uh, take admission in science they have dream of becoming doctors and engineers right for if you want to become doctors and engineers okay every day you go every day you know every day you have to study minimum seven eight hours okay so when I in the class also when I say, when I say you have to study seven or eight hours everybody is to laugh right sir how is it possible is it possible dear students you have to study okay so for today I think that's enough okay if time allows in the next class we'll discuss each and everything and our chapter one is about to finish and if you want to know more detail in physics okay you can go through the book okay so thank you my dear students take care bye.